Hello fellow plot questers, today is the part 2 to the previous video about writing. So last time we actually explored how to get inspired enough to write, and also we talked about how to write a strong opening, although I wasn't very specific. Today I'm gonna talk about, not really gonna talk about the book, but the process sort of before the book. So sort of the between You've started, sort of started your novel, right? You've written your opening sequence, but you don't really know what, how to go from there. And you're stuck. And this just also means that you need to plan out some world building and some characters. So let's get right into it, I guess. World building. The common process of creating your own fantasy world, or just your world in general. For example, J.K. Rowling probably did world building like, I want just a modern setting, but I want magic to be real. And she started to build her world. Hogwarts, the Forbidden Forest, the lake around Hogwarts, the Whomping Willow, the Weeping Willow, whatever, and Diagon Alley, etc. She built her world step by step. This accounts for any sort of fantasy or science fiction novel. And you need, you as the author, needs to know your world like the back of your hand. Because this is the world that you need to show the reader through your main character. Now, how do you, how do you do world building? Well, I don't know how to really explain this, but first, sit down. And think about what sort of world you would like to create. Think about a genre first, then we can go from there. Do we want to create a world, a fantasy world, a completely new fan fantastical world? Or do we want a sort of more light fantasy, like Harry Potter? Or do we want high fantasy, like Lord of the Rings? Do we want a completely new land, an, 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 a country that did not exist before? Or just simply some sort of secret organization that is lurking underneath actual society? What are we doing? I myself am a high fantasy writer, so let's start with the root of I want to create a world where a big fantasy world. And a good way to do this is to create a map. Now, before you create a map, we, we want to think of some places. And I think it's always a good idea to sort of start with the place that your main character first appears, the scene in the opening sequence. Think about your main character. My main character uses magic. Huh, do other people use magic? Okay, other people use magic as well. Then is this city a magical city? Are there floating lights everywhere with, with, mo with mo non-modern technology that seems to somehow work through magic? So, in other words, is this a new world where I, where magic replaced technology? A medieval world, but yet modern in some ways because of magic? So think about that thought process. You first need to think about what your main character does. What kind of creatures are inside your book? For example, magic users or monsters or dwarves or elves or whatever you want to put in your book. And then you think about a setting that is good for them. For example, in, um, let's say, what's a good famous book that we can talk about? Lord of the Rings. First, we think about Frodo. He is a hobbit, and a hobbit lives in a hole. That is how Hobbiton and the Shire was made. And then slowly we start to expand out towards alongside with the character's journey. The Elven, the Elven Fortress, and Minas Tirith, Helm's Deep, the Rye, the Rohirrim's home, Gondor's home, Mordor, Mount of Doom, Sauron. Connected to each character is a setting, and you slowly build it out alongside your character's journey. But, of course, in order for you to world build then, you would need to know your character's journey. How to do this? Well, I think I mentioned in the first episode of this series, that you need to know the beginning and end of the book. How is it gonna end? What kind of twist is there gonna be? Who's the real bad guy? What's gonna happen? What's the answer to the question that you made in the opening sequence? What is going to happen? And where is it going to happen? For example, 
Lord of the Rings again because it's really a good popular book. We start in Hobbiton and we go to the Elven Woods. Then we go again through the mines and then we go somewhere else and then we go to somewhere else again and again until we get to Minas Tirith. Then we get to Mordor. Then we go back to Hobbiton. Settings. World building. And although the term world building can be deceiving, it's not just the places that you should be thinking about. You should be thinking about the culture. What the main character speaks, how it speaks, what kind of cultures are there? And culture includes food, language, music, etc. And of course, architecture as well, because the unique architecture for your world, for your high fantasy world, could be very, very helpful. Create all of these things. You don't need to create all of them at once. Slowly think about it as you write and add new details as you write. For example, a good example of this is perhaps your main character is gaping at all the spices of this and all of these like different kinds of things in the marketplace. And you say she gaped at the spices and she gaped at the barrels of rugs, for example. Now, how can you put some cultural stuff in there about about these kind of this, these people? She smelled cinnamon in the air, and she gaped at the beautiful silken rugs made out of dragons, dragon leather. Dragon leather. They hunt dragons. World building. And this is just this really simple process of just expanding out from your main character into the world, into the people in the world, and how they talk and how they live. And that is the simple process of world building. And light fantasy is a little bit more simple. You just need to find a difference between your world and the current world and, and this world, because light fantasy is usually based in our world. Then you need to think about these special places. Because for example, Harry Potter is light fantasy with high fantasy elements, such as Albus Dumbledore and Wizards. These are high fantasy characters and Hogwarts, that's a high fantasy setting, a castle, a school for magic. And you combine all of these things and you think about the differences, the uniqueness of your world that differentiates it from the real world, then you focus on that for your world building. For example, J.K. Rowling, oh, I, I, by the way, this isn't an interview or anything, let's say Harry Potter. Harry Potter is a wizard, a wizard. Is there a school for wizards? Oh, then what does the school look like? Oh, it's a castle? Are there teachers in that castle? Are there adult wizards? On and on and on. And that's how you should expand for light fantasy world building. Like I said, it's not that hard. You just need to think about your main character, think about his journey throughout the book and the plot, and make setting and culture and details that will bring the book to life. Good world building, it will be the baseline for your book. And always, it's always the baseline. Because without good world building, even if you have great plot, but if you just say generically, he walked through the city, he walked through the town, he walked through a marketplace, he walked through a building, he walked through a castle, there's no life to that. I know books are supposed to pique your imagination, but there aren't even a words that make the readers imagine any sort of specific thing. And that all counts into world building. And like I said, world building is super, super important. And this is something that you should probably do after you think about your opening sequence and the ending. Because if you just like, although of course the reverse process can be done, like you think about the world and then sort of write, I think it's the best idea is usually to create the plot first, because then you can sort of create all the settings and different cultures and details that you can imbue within the plot, which is sometimes easier, although the reverse could also be true. I hope this sort of helped, and world building is super duper important like I just said, and like always, your plot cluster and the plot cluster, that was how and why you should world build for fantasy, high fantasy or low fantasy novels, although I was more detailed for high fantasy, because I'm a high fantasy writer. Have a great day, and good bye.